Welcome. It's so good to be with you guys this morning. My name's Lindsay, I'm the Next Gen Pastor here at The Movement. Um, we're so excited to worship with y'all this morning. Would you guys go ahead and stand to your feet with me? Also wanna welcome everybody joining our online campus this morning. Thanks for welcoming us into your home. It's a privilege to be with you guys. We're gonna take some time right now and enter into a time of worship. All worship is here at The Movement is a time where we come before God and we say, God, this morning, you can have it all. You can have every bit of who we are. And this morning, myself and our team, we felt a special invitation for you guys just into the rest of the Lord. I woke up this morning with a scripture, it's Psalm 46, and it says, be still and know that I am God. It's really hard to know that God is God when your life is noisy and busy and constantly in motion, isn't it? It's a lot easier when you're still before him. So our invitation to you this morning is to embrace the stillness of the Lord, the stillness and the anxiety pushing presence of God. So I wanna pray that over us now, if you guys would bow your heads with me. Father, we're still before you. We know that you're God like cerebrally in our head, but Lord, would you impart that to our souls and our spirits this morning, a deep, full being knowledge that you are God and that you will be glorified. So we rest in that knowledge this morning. We sing these songs from a place of that knowledge. We pray these prayers, we hear these words, we read these scriptures out of a place of understanding that you are God and you alone. Your kingdom come, not ours. So this morning we rest in that and we give you these songs and every word that will be spoken and we say, come and be glorified. And we pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's worship together.
sing set a fire one last time to set a fire down Right. 
you're worthy of all that we could bring. We come before you in the stillness this morning to rest in you and say that you're enough. We cast down all of our crowns, everything that has impeded our view of you, that we might just lock eyes with you for a moment, Father. You're worthy of that and so much more. For all you've done and all you're yet to do, you're worthy, Lord. So this morning we're still before you to acknowledge that you are God. Be still and know that he is God. He will be glorified. So be glorified this morning, God. We give you these songs as an offering. We pray that they're holy and pleasing and acceptable to you. Be glorified through the reading of the word in just a moment. We pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Would you guys honor our worship team for leading us so well? Come on. You guys can go ahead and be seated. Hey, as an extension of our worship, we're going to continue by the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Here at the movement, we believe the tithe is an act of obedience and the offering is an act of generosity and it's a gift to be generous. So we're gonna continue worshiping now by the giving of our tithes and our offerings. You'll see a variety of giving methods up on the screen. Let's take 60 seconds to prepare our giving. All right, well, welcome once again. My name's Lindsay. I'm the Next Gen Pastor here at The Movement. Want to welcome everybody tuning into our online campus. Thanks for welcoming us into your home this morning. I have two quick celebrations, then three invitations, and then welcome up Pastor Pat to the platform. First celebration, she ran off the platform so she didn't have to get embarrassed, but it's K House 21st birthday today, so. <laughs> She can, she can hear you back there. So if you see her, grab her. You can buy her a shot of espresso. And then um, it'll be, yeah. <laughs> I've been messing with that all morning. Um, second second uh, celebration I have for you guys. We just got back from Oaxaca. Myself, Haley. That, there's an, an amazing team that went with us down to Oaxaca. Our missionary, Desi, down there is doing absolutely incredible work. So if you're interested in learning more about what we got to do down in Oaxaca, grab myself, grab Haley. We also sent out some emailers and it's also posted on our social media, some recaps of what we did. So make sure you grab one of us if you wanna hear more or see some photos of that trip. It was an absolutely amazing time. Okay, invitations. Uh, today at 1 p.m. we have our starting points class. This is an awesome opportunity for you guys to come in, learn about our mission and vision here at the Movement Church as well as meet our pastoral staff. So if you're new or if you're fresh to the movement, we would love to meet you guys. So join us at 1 p.m. for starting points. Secondly, at the end of June, we're gonna be hosting our baptisms. So if you are new in the faith, if you have not been baptized yet, then you need to get baptized. You need to get baptized, one, because it's an outward declaration of this inward transformation that God has done in your life. We don't believe that it imputes salvation to you, but it's an act of obedience and it's an out outward declaration of what God's done in your hearts. So join us at the end of June to be baptized. If you have not been yet, you can head to themovement.org to sign up for that. And then lastly, if you do want to get baptized or if you're just interested in learning more about the primary tenets of our faith, we have a class coming up on May 22nd, and it's the first of three classes. I teach the first one. It's called New Life 101. This is an awesome opportunity for you guys to learn about the basic tenets of our faith, what salvation means, what it looks like. We walk through the Romans road. That's walking through the book of Romans and what it looks like to, to dedicate your life to Christ. And so if you wanna get baptized, that class is mandatory. But if you wanna just learn, 
you're invited. So I'd love to have you. And then Pastor Haley and Pastor Jeff teach New Life 102 and 103. So an amazing uh, three classes there that we'd love to invite you guys to join. So if you're interested in getting baptized, joining New Life 101, 102, or 103, um, click the movement.org or you can scan the seat back in front of you with the QR code. So with all that going on, we just want to thank you guys for everything. Um, we're going to take a moment and welcome up Pastor Pat to the platform. He's got an awesome message prepared for you guys. So let's take 60 seconds to do so. God bless you exciting to be here and celebrate my baby girl isn't a baby anymore man that's so crazy she she's our second oldest so I mean I still have five more uh so we 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 backfilled so plenty of birthdays coming uh when you see her um give her a give her a fist bump for sure she's almost old enough now to rent a car so that's what we're heading for I think it's 25 Hey, last week we started a series uh, called Uncensored. It's the church according to the book of Acts. And what we talked about uh, was key. We laid some foundation. And one of the key things we said and the challenge that I, I asked you to do was is to leave what at home? Leave it in the drawer. What did I say? Leave the, there's one person who listened. Awesome. Um, leave the red pen in the drawer. Why? Because typically what we do is, is we utilize this red pen to censor uh, according to our comforts, our likings, what we can wrap our head around, what we can conceive. And what we said was is that we need to be open to further instruction to the Holy Spirit, as we read in the first three verses in the book of Acts. So we needed to leave the red pen home today. I'm going to give some further illustration today. That's why I have the whiteboard with us. Uh, I love old school paper. There's nothing digital about this. This is as analog as you're going to get. Uh, but I am digitally challenged, you know. So we're going to talk today about the church can and should be a vehicle to carry and continue Jesus' message about the kingdom of God. Now, this, is, this is really important because we can carry a lot of messages Think about the messages that you carry on a daily basis. Think about the messages that are being carried to our doorstep on a daily basis. Think about when you turn on a television, when you turn on the internet, when you drive down the freeway, when you are talking to somebody. There's a constant message being preached to you. There's a constant message being preached to me. And, and this is what I know about humanity. Whether you know it or believe it or want to acknowledge it or not, you're preaching a message. There's a message that you're preaching in your life that you're building something, whether you try to or not, inadvertently, you're building something that's attached to a truth that you believe and you're demonstrating that thing. You just do it. It's in your actions. And, and the kingdom of God, I think, is no different. So today we're going to talk about the church as it can and it should be as a vehicle who carries this message of the kingdom of God, as kingdom builders, with kingdom truth, and kingdom demonstration. It's action. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 1. We read the first three verses last week. I'm going to read this because what I'm going to do is read a few verses after that. I want to have the full context, not that much. Uh, in my first book, it says, uh, I told you Theophilus. Now, I already said last week, so if you didn't catch 
last week, go back onto our YouTube and you can watch that sermon. It lays some great foundation in more depth about the book of Acts I'm not going to get into today. But I will say this. This guy, Luke, who wrote the gospel of Luke, wrote the book of Acts. And the book of Acts is a continuation of what he started in the book of Luke. So the book of Luke was about Jesus, everything he was doing and teaching. The book of Acts is about the church continuing to do and teach underneath Jesus' command to us and what that looks like. Are you with me? So in my first book, this is Luke talking, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. He proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them, who? To the apostles about what? The kingdom of God. So our focus today, the apostles about what? The kingdom of God. So Luke goes on to elaborate in the very next verse. It reads something like this. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Like once when he, like this one time, like if I was telling this story, like, okay, I'm going to be Luke. Like this one time Jesus was eating, uh, he was hanging out with them. And he commanded them, don't leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. Now I want you to know the kingdom of God is full of promise. Have, have any of you ever had someone promise you something before? Have you ever had somebody promise you something and then break that promise? Have you ever promised somebody something and you're the one who broke the promise? You're lying. If you don't raise your, come on, man. Okay. It's cool. Repentance is for everybody. Okay. This is what we need to know. I want to establish something. Jesus is saying to them, don't leave until you receive the fullness of the kingdom through the promise that I have for you. And I want you to know that when Jesus promises something, when you read in the Bible, in Scripture, when you read his words, when you read the promises in Scripture, they're irrefutable. He doesn't go back on his word. He doesn't change his mind. That what he reveals to you in the promise, it is there for you to walk into. It, 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 is, it is not like it is in this horizontal relationship we have in humanity. Where we're going to break our word with one another at times. And sometimes in really small ways. And sometimes in massive ways. But the reality is Jesus will never do that. So I want us to, the kingdom of God is full of what? Turn to somebody and say, promise. So he says, don't leave Jerusalem till the Father sends you the gift he promises. I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Now I just want to press pause. Let's pump the brakes for a second. I can relate to the apostles because they get this completely wrong. Sometimes I get it completely wrong. I'll read something and I'm like, God, you said your promise was X, Y, Z. This is the truth. And this is what we have to know. The apostles were asking the wrong question, why? Because they were trying to get Jesus to achieve their desire according to their truth and their agenda. When are you going to serve our kingdom, Jesus? When are you going to restore, free me? Jesus, I'm bound. Jesus, I'm stuck. Have you ever been stuck before? I, I, man, I hate being stuck. And my heart goes out to people when they're stuck. And I, it's like, man, I'm stuck. I want to be free. And then, we're, Jesus, would you free me? Would you, I, I'm stuck. Would you free me? Would you restore my kingdom? And, I, and, 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 and we need to have a perspective shift. The apostles get it wrong. Jesus wasn't going to restore the kingdom of Israel. This is important. He wasn't going to restore the kingdom of Israel, but rather restore Israel and the world to his kingdom. Let me say that again. Jesus wasn't going to restore 
the nation of Israel. Rather, he was going to restore Israel and your life and my life and creation back to his kingdom, the original design. In verse 7, he replied, The Father alone has authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. (laughs) I love Jesus. He's like, "Um, this is what I need you to do. Don't be worried about the future, but be busy in the present. I'm a very futuristic person. I think really big. I live way out in the future. And I had to learn this. I, I mean, this is personal to me in so many ways. I had to learn this lesson. I can be so wrapped up in the future that I don't get busy in the present. And Jesus is saying to them, he kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like my dad, he's going to work all that out. I need you to not worry about that. I need you to, I need you to stay present with me and be busy in the present. There's things to do. There's things that need to be, need to be happening. There's things in your life right now that need to be attended to. And, you, and, and sometimes you're so worried about the future, so worried about, what, what, but what about, and every time you say what about, you don't get busy with what you know is. And you have something in front of you today that God wants his kingdom to have an impact and influence in. And sometimes, like the apostles in my life, I get so wrapped up in the future. And Jesus is like, Pat, stop worrying about the future. Get busy today. And he goes, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, what's the purpose of this power? It's not to build our own kingdom. What's the purpose of the power? And you will be my what? Witnesses. So the purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is to be a witness. A witness of what? Telling people about me where? Everywhere. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. See, the church can and should be a vehicle to continue to carry the message of the kingdom of God that Jesus preached, number one, by being a kingdom builder. Number one, by being a kingdom builder. It says he, Jesus, talked to them, the apostles, about the kingdom of God. Let me define some things for you. I think this is fascinating. I'm a bit of a word nerd. I think words matter, okay? Uh, The word apostle is a delegate. It's a messenger. It means one sent forth with orders. That's what an apostle is. Now, let me define what kingdom is really quickly. And then I'm going to give you a picture of what an apostle to a kingdom, what it looks like and and the context that Jesus was using it in. Cause this is, this is important. So we have an apostle to delegate a messenger one sent forth. Okay. With orders, (laughs) not aimlessly walking, doing your own thing. Okay. With orders, a kingdom It's a king's right or authority to rule over a kingdom. And so in my life, sometimes I feel like when you walk in my house, I'm like, I'm the king of my kingdom. What does that mean? I feel like sometimes I have the right and authority to rule over my kingdom. Some states give you the right to actually defend that. Okay? And so I want want to conceptually give you the idea that God's kingdom means that he has the right and authority to rule and reign over that. He has the power to exert his authority on every single thing, every dominion, every part of humanity, every part of creation, every city, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, okay? It's the territory subject to the rule and the reign of a king. And so if you're the king of a kingdom, you have the right to rule and reign, but it also denotes the physical territory, okay? Where can you rule and reign? Let's talk about the kingdom of God. Let's let, now let's start to merge this. The kingdom of God then, specifically, Jesus is preaching the kingdom of God, which means, if you look this up in the Greek, the reign of the Messiah. Who's the Messiah? Jesus. Jesus is preaching the reign of himself, I am the Messiah, and my Father has given me authority to rule and reign. For what purpose? To restore creation, humanity, back to its original design. To be living in accordance to and in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? The king's kingdom 
carries the king's culture. I'm going to say this again. A king's kingdom carries a king's culture. So let me, get, let me describe for you what an apostle, when Jesus called these guys apostles, when you see this word apostle, we think it's a Christian term because we read it in the Bible. <laughs> but it's not. This was a term that you would probably see in the Roman Empire used first and foremost. And what an apostle was, was this. The Roman Empire was powerful and it was wide. So if I took and I was, if I was ruling in the, in the Roman Empire and I went out and I conquered another, another land, another territory, and I said, I'm gonna, I want Roman culture to live there. The Roman rulers would put a general, they put military there, right, to, to, to collect taxes and for the rule. But what would happen is, as soon as the main group of people that conquered that area would leave and go back to Rome or on to the next place, the culture would begin to slip and it would, it would be retained back to the culture of the people of origin there. Are you following me? So what the Roman Empire figured out was if we send a person called an apostle to be coupled with the military general, then we can take care of the rule and reign, but we can now establish the king's culture through the apostolic hands of the person there. So there was a person that would, would, would have been an apostle that their job was to actually be a cultural architect and build Roman culture in this foreign place and make those people now Roman. Are you following me? You are an apostle. You bring the king's culture of heaven, God's kingdom culture, into foreign places where there's a real enemy and there's a real warfare happening. And God is the one who, who provides the weaponry, he, rule and reign, but you and I become the cultural architects that build kingdom culture. Are you following me? So this is important because we need to be kingdom builders. Culture matters. It matters. So being cultural architect matters. The apostles, they build kingdom by being cultural architects. Follow me. Church, a church, the church, our church can and should be kingdom builders as cultural architects. Starting in our own lives, in our homes, in our neighborhoods. To your, to your friends and your workplaces, to the city of San Marcos, to North County, to San Diego, to California, to the United States, to the ends of the earth. Are you following me this morning? Can you, can you just say to yourself real quickly, I, I am a cultural architect. See, kingdom matters, so we need to tend to kingdom matters, which are, so this is what Jesus says, cultural architects. So listen, before Jesus has this conversation with his apostles and he ascends into heaven, before that, in the book of Matthew 28, it says Jesus came and he told his disciples, this is a very famous scripture. If you've been around church for any period of time, you've probably heard this. If this is your first time, this is awesome because I want you to know what being a cultural architect entails. This is what it says. I have given all authority in heaven and on, I have been given all authority on heaven and earth. This is Jesus talking. God gave him the authority to what? To rule and to reign as what? The king, the Messiah. Therefore, what is my, Jesus is like, what is my authority there for? <laughs> therefore? Okay. It's an, okay, words matter. <laughs> therefore, go and do what? Be cultural architects by doing what? Making disciples of all who? Nations. Why? Because that's all under God's kingdom. 
under all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It says, teach these disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Help them become cultural architects. And be sure of this. I am with you always to your very last day. What a promise. As a follower of Jesus, you and I are delegates who are sent forth with orders to build kingdom culture as cultural architects. The church can and should build God's kingdom culture by, number two, presenting kingdom truth. Sometimes, like the apostles that we just read about, So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and do what? Restore our kingdom. Me, my, mine. Sometimes we become cultural architects. We go, God, thank you, God. You've given me, I am a delegate for your kingdom. And we inadvertently or mistakenly go and we start presenting our own kingdom truth. We're building something. So we need to figure out what the truth is. Here's, here, here's what I would say. When they say our kingdom, the apostles, this means the apostles own agenda for the kingdom of Israel. It's, that's a limited view. They can, they, they can only see so big. Do you know that you and I have a limited ability to see so far? I, I, is, someone can fully Google this because I'm going to get this wrong. You can fully fact check me on this. Uh, I believe like the horizon I, th- I think the horizon is, is like, as far as the human eye can see, that's actually what creates the horizon line. When you look out, like for us, look out on the ocean. And it's somewhere like around two miles or something. I forget what the number is, right? Proving we have limited vision. God's not limited to a horizon. Our kingdom is a limited kingdom. So, I I learned this a long time ago. There's true and there's truth. So here's what's true. Jesus came to restore the kingdom. So the apostles weren't wrong. It's true. (laughs) True, Jesus wants you to be happy. But Jesus isn't like, I want you to be happy and pursue your own truth. At the risk of complete stupidity. Complete illogic. The worst thing that we said to our kids at at a generation ago was, you can be anything you want to be. False. You can't. Sorry. I know everyone wants to get a participation award. But no, I'm sorry. You can't play in the NBA if you don't have certain skill sets. Okay? You can't. Don't get hurt by it. Go find another career path. That's just life. But we don't want to talk like this. We need to be, because we crush their dreams. We want them to be whatever they want to be. We've taken that now to the point where you can be any gender you want to be. Like, I identify identify as African American today. I identify as a seven foot two multi gazillionaire NBA basketball player. And because I identify, because I can be anything I want to be, that means that today I could dunk on you. Wrong. I have a vertical leap of like a quarter of an inch. My calves are bigger than my quadriceps. I have a vertical leap challenge. The church needs, can, and should be speaking truth. True, Jesus came to restore the kingdom, but the, quote, kingdom is not yours. (laughs) Uh, Okay. The church can and should fit as as part of God's kingdom rather than Fitting God's kingdom as part of the church. Okay. 
Here's what happens. We limit ourselves. We limit ourselves. We, what we say is, this is my kingdom. And God, in Pat's kingdom, I'm super generous. Because <laughs> you're generous. And I want to be like you, Jesus. So I'm going to be generous. If you cannot sense sarcasm. I'm so generous, Jesus. Your kingdom can totally be part of mine. Some of us treat God's kingdom in our life like an appendage. You know what an appendage is? Something that's attached to you, like an arm or a pinky toe or a tumor. Sometimes we feel like having the kingdom of God part of our life is killing us. So we're going to give him just a little bit. Sometimes we keep him on the outside, but he's part of our kingdom. Sometimes we let him in. He can have this part. But what we do is we say, the rest of it, all this, God, you came to free Pat and to restore my kingdom. You can have that part. That is the picture of the kingdom of God fitting into the church's kingdom. So what we do is we make rules around, around our Christian life and around church based on, I said this last week, what? Our comforts, likes, and dislikes. I don't like that. Don't know what to do for you. Because if I read it in scripture, and Jesus is like, this is the stuff I did, and you're gonna do more than this stuff that you read, go do the stuff, I'm gonna be like, I, John Wimber said this. He, he, was, he, he, he led a, a ministry when I was young that I watched just go crazy. God moving called the vineyard. John Wimber said, I just read the stuff and wondered, when are we gonna do the stuff? When we decide that we're not gonna just make God's kingdom part of ours. Instead, what I'm presenting to you is that this is God's kingdom. And somewhere inside of God's kingdom, he sees you and he sees me he sees the movement church. He sees the church. And he says, hey, Pat, not to burst your bubble, but you're not that cool. I mean, movement church is a cool name, but you're not that cool. It's really not about you. In fact, you play a part. And I would hate to know actually the part of the human anatomy that God would tell me I am. Because some are glorious to lay your eyes on and some are not. God's kingdom. We play a role. That's the truth. And when we, when we can grab a hold of this perspective, do you know what happens? We stop being limited. You know why? Because when I put God's kingdom in mine, I've limited. I've actually, however big you can draw that circle, that's how big, that, that's how much, that's the definition of your more. But when I'm part of a bigger kingdom, all of this becomes the more. This is the extra to my ordinary. This is the extra to our ordinary. I'm just a dude. 
We're just a church, we're, we're just a church full of people that are like, we just want to see God move. How do we want to see God move? We want to be cultural architects and we just want to present the kingdom with kingdom truth. And here's the truth. I am part of a broader story. You are part of a broader story. This church is part of a broader story. So that means that if a church across the street needs something and we have the resource, we definitely aren't going to do anything because we're competitors. Can we get over ourselves? Does this help? Okay. So the desire is for the truth, the truth of God's kingdom, the truth of God's kingdom to invade ours. I love Jesus because he gives us this playbook. In Matthew 6, 9, he says, hey, you should pray like this. He says, our, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. I'm, I'm going I'm to give you some different language. Our Father, who is in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your name be bigger than Pat's name. May your name be bigger than the movement church. Like what would happen in America if we just took all the names off of churches and you just, on all, on all of our websites, on all of our social media, it just said church. There would be some pastors getting out of the church business. Can I just be real with you? Let me, let me go a step further. There would be people leaving those churches because they wouldn't be able to tout something that fit their kingdom. And I get it, we all have our own makeup, right? We all have, like, churches have kind of have personalities, but our mission is the same, and what we're teaching and preaching should be the same, and we should be presenting kingdom truth. And so Jesus says this, our Father in heaven, may your name be holy, may your kingdom come soon. I love this. May your kingdom come soon. You know, there's a sense of urgency. We need, we need God's kingdom to come soon. Not like end of the world soon. I just mean right now, I need God's kingdom to show up soon. Why? Because you and I have limited vision and things begin looking impossible and we need the possible to be made in the impossible. So we need God's kingdom to come soon. Let your will be done here on earth as it happens in heaven. That what, what we're doing is when I can only see with my limited vision what seems like impossible, I'm gonna rest on the kingdom truth of what God wants to do when I invite him to invade. You and I, the best thing we can do is swim and be immersed in God's kingdom. We, we, we need like, sometimes I, I'll, I'll be training and I'll come home, I'll shower at the pool, and my wife later on the day, she'll be close to me, she'll say, did you swim? I said, yeah, how did you know that? She goes, you smell like chlorine. I'm like, I showered. That's how the kingdom of God should be. You should be emitting the fragrance of the kingdom of God everywhere you go. We should be immersed in it. People should go. Have you, been in the, have you been in the presence of God? Have you been in the presence of God? <laughs> yeah, why? Like, what, what, what are you talking about? Because it's like something is strangely weird and awkward and different about you. God is just, he's ready and willing to invade. It's just an invitation to invade. The church can and should present kingdom truth with 
This is going to be quick. We're going to wrap up here. The church can and should present kingdom truth with kingdom demonstration. With kingdom demonstration. Verse 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Jesus says, mine. <laughs> Let me, th this is what's crazy. Uh, a witness. It's to be a witness in serving him by testimony. What's the word testimony mean? I'm going to break something down in succession. Check this out. To be a witness in serving him by testimony. What's testimony? You know what testimony means? Demonstration, proof, or evidence. It's not just preaching it. It's not just talking it. It's walking it. The kingdom is better caught than taught. We need to have a demonstration. Witnesses of God's kingdom demonstrate God's kingdom to serve for others to see. Someone is watching. Number one thing that being a parent has taught me, I have another set of eyes watching. And when I say, where did that kid get that from? You know? And then, like, you start, you're like, oh, that ugly attitude is mine. What am I demonstrating? Let me ask you this morning. What are you demonstrating? You demonstrating? Are, are, are you a cultural architect presenting your own kingdom truth as proof, demonstrating your kingdom? I know this is I know this is tough. I like I'm with you in this. Matthew 5:13, Jesus says, "You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless." Then listen to what he says, "You are the light of the world." You your demonstration is a light in darkness. This is important for us. The church can and should be this light in darkness. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, Church, let me, let me encourage you. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Kingdom demonstration. So that everyone will what? Praise who? The Heavenly Father. Not praise Pat. I'm not the hero. You're not the hero. But there's a kingdom demonstration that we're to present through kingdom truth as kingdom builders. To demonstrate because someone's watching. to demonstrate proof and evidence that when God's kingdom invades, it changes things. Makes the impossible possible. It's the extra with our ordinary. You have a role to play as the demonstrated proof of God's kingdom. Let's stand together. You have a role to play as the demonstrated proof of God's kingdom. Let me say it this way. Whether you try or not, whether you're exerting energy, whether or not you're being purposeful, you are demonstrating. You are playing a role and you are demonstrating proof of a kingdom. This morning I would ask, can we be a church that can and should be kingdom preachers? As we become kingdom builders, presenting kingdom truth, 
with kingdom demonstration. Last week, the challenge was is that we were gonna leave this red pen in the drawer. This week, my challenge, if you're willing to accept it is, are you willing? As we continue talking about the church as it can and should be, are you willing to step in and learn how to be a kingdom builder, presenting kingdom truth with kingdom demonstration? but you have a role to play. There's no ride in the bench. That's the challenge. Let's close our eyes this morning if you feel comfortable doing so. The kingdom of God is built on truth through demonstration. That's what Jesus did. That's what he's called us to be as a church. It's what he's called us to be as individuals. You know, we can preach, but it's impossible to demonstrate the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. So when I present this today, I, 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 I wanna tell you, I have, I have not told you how, because next week we're gonna talk about how. Next week we're gonna talk about how the church can and should demonstrate God's kingdom, and it's gonna be by being empowered by the Holy Spirit. We're gonna get to that. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be fun, actually. I would, I, would, I would not hesitate to say, come with an open heart to receive further instruction. Here's the question today. Am I demonstrating the truth of my own kingdom as evidence to others? Or the truth of God's kingdom as evidence to others? Which is it? And that's a personal question for you that I'm leaving you with to think about this week. And, and I would also encourage you, read through the second chapter of the book of Acts. Last week I said, hey, read through the first chapter, read through the second chapter. Guys, this, isn't, this is a very, very, very low on-ramp. Okay, family? Read through the second chapter of the book of Acts. You're gonna love it. And it's gonna help you when you come in next week. And, and, and I think God's gonna do some preparation in your heart and God wants to do some really awesome things next week. This morning, some of us need God's kingdom to invade ours, and we need to flip this diagram over. If that's you this morning, if you're like, yeah, I think I have my kingdom and God has a portion to play, and I need to flip this over, and I need, I need to be in a... Pat, you may be saying, Pat, I, I'm in a position that I need God's kingdom to, to really surround my circumstances and invade what's going on. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? That was a lot of hands. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray. That's what Jesus said to do. There's power in prayer. And we're simply gonna say, God, um, if you're, do me a favor, raise your hand again real quick. We have a ministry team around the room that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna find you. And there might be someone around you if you raise your hand. It's totally cool. So we're just gonna pray. Father, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that your name be kept holy. That your name be lifted above all names right now. That what we're asking and what we're seeking is for the truths and the promises of your kingdom aligned to your kingdom promises that they would be made known in our circumstances. But by asking that, what we're saying is we're willing for you to build, to architecturally design and craft something in our life perhaps that we aren't aware of or that maybe we, we don't even know that we're comfortable with. And God, we know though that you're, you're a God that's gentle and loving and so as you do that, Lord, that you would be sure to help us allow your truth to invade what we find to be true. So this morning, if you find that there's a circumstance that's too great, that I want you to know this morning, the kingdom of God has the ability to invade that circumstance. And so we're just gonna immerse that. Just 
We're gonna take that and we're gonna set it right down in the middle. And we're gonna say, God, let your kingdom come and invade this circumstance. Let it invade this place. We're not gonna try and control it. This is key. God, we're not gonna try and control it. And we just say, come. We invite you to invade. It's that simple. Establish your culture in our crisis. Establish your culture in the midst of our circumstance. Because when you do, we remove the limiting factors and we open ourselves up to so much more. We open ourselves up to the extra that you wanna do with our ordinary. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. If you need prayer this morning for anything specific, please don't hesitate to come forward. Our ministry team is always ready and willing and, uh, and wanting to pray with you. We take it very serious. Um, and we would love to for the rest of you. Do not miss next week. It's, it's gonna be a fun demonstration of God's power through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.